everyone, it's Kira, and this is Polymer Clay TV, and today I'm going to show you a little something using embossing powders and this really cool new embossing gun that I got, a heat gun. Um, you know, we've been talking, I have been talking a little bit about how to make your work look finished, and one of the things that I like to do is take a look at things that I think are done and decide, you know, do I need to take it a little further? Is it really done? And I had made, let's talk about these pieces first. I had made a bunch of these sort of um, semicircular pieces a while back, and I was experimenting with the idea of hanging dangles and tassels and things to make the this little boho line of, of jewelry. Now, some of these are a success, and some of them really aren't. So to me, this one is pretty successful. I've got the shading around the green that I wanted. I had the pink and green and the silk screening here came out perfectly. So you can see the whole design and everything looks great. So I'm gonna hold on to that one for later. And on this design, it's kind of like a denim with the pattern very subtly in the background. And I really like how this one looks as well. Now this one, I feel like I kind of failed. I have this pattern here in the copper. It's splotchy in some places. It didn't come through all the way in others. I'm, I don't love the contrast of the color with the background. So I'm going to say I'm going to keep this inner ring because it's just like a little accent. And I'll keep this part but I'm going to cover this bottom part with something else so that I can use this piece. So these are good. This one needs work. And with these, so here I have another sort of failed silk screen. I like this here, but the silk screen really didn't come out so great. It's splotchy and you can't really see it. So I'm going to play with that one as well. Same thing here. This one I experimented with three colors. And again, my silk screen really didn't come out so great not at all on this one, so I'll definitely do something here. And what I'm going to choose to use is my color fuse powders. So I'm going to show you, I guess maybe I'll do it on this one, I'll save these for a later time, how to use them on a piece that's already baked to enhance it and make it look better. So I've got this flat piece and then I have this is like a little set of beads that I made a while back and I kept them around not really knowing what I would do with them. This is actually a pressing from an antique button and it looks pretty cool the way it is but at the same time I feel like I could put something on here to make it look more ancient, more like a button. So I might play with that one. These little beads are okay. I'll, I'll keep those. They're too small for me to want to mess with. They have a little texture and color on them and they're fine. Um, this is a really cool round or oval. It's a 3D bead that I made and I made it on one of these bead pins but I made it with quick cure clay from Ranger because we've been playing with that lately. So I will show you how to do this embossing and this is the embossing dabber. I keep saying embossing, but it's really not what it is. It's an embossing dabber that we use with the color fuse enamels. So you can put your bead back on a pin and use it in the 3D environment with this, which is really kind of like an, a medium that will get the powders to stick. So here are some pieces that are completed using this technique and I actually had to use the tackiness of the clay to attach my color fuse to these pieces. So I didn't need to use my embossing dabber because the clay was still tacky and not cured. So it will attach directly, look at how pretty that one is, it'll attach directly to your clay and then you can just bake it in the oven. This one I used a coin stencil, which is basically just a round stencil that's two and a half inches wide so that you can make something like a trading coin. And this is some of the grunge green and a very sparkly copper color from the copper set. 
And then this here had some um, shimmer shifts underneath on the clay before I did it. And I actually did put the color fuse on the clay with a stencil and then baked it in the oven. So it, it kind of ran and flattened. It looks very cool, like ancient metal. But so these, this is what happens when you bake it with the clay. But you know, what if your piece is baked and you want to do something after the fact? You can do the same thing here using the embossing dabber, your color fuse enamels, and a heat gun. Now if you've been crafting for a while, you may have one of these. This is a Darius heat tool or similar. It's sold under a few different names, but basically you've got an on-off switch, some kind of kickstand to hold the hot end up off your craft table, and then the heat comes out of here. And with this style heat gun, not only heat, but air. Air blows out of here, kind of like a hair dryer. And this tool can be frustrating for the technique I'm about to show you because it'll blow your powders everywhere. So I just got a brand new one from Wagner and I really wanted to show it to you in action. So this is my new heat gun and basically it has a low setting, a high setting. It has a kickstand so it actually stands up like this on your table and heat comes out of here but not a blown force of air so it's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how quick and easy it is to use these powders with your dabber on something that's already cured or baked. So I have a coffee filter here to catch my extras and I'm just going to go ahead and get the flow started and just dab this all over this bead. Because it's rounded I gotta get up on all the areas. It's basically kind of like a sticky medium that's going to help the powder stick to the bead. And then I'm just going to dump this on here. And I'm going to move this out of the way because Although I don't anticipate a lot of air blowing, I don't really want to accidentally get any of my powder uh, involved, you know, like cured or whatever. You don't want, I don't want to heat it by accident. So I'm going to go ahead and use my gun. I'm going to turn down the volume because it's pretty loud and show you how quickly this works in real time. Isn't that nice looking? It cures pretty fast. Once it starts to heat, it kind of just flows over the whole surface. So here I've got the um, sort of a German silver powder on the bottom part of this and I'm just going to use a brush to make sure that it's not on the purple part because I don't want to cover that with fusing. So you use a coffee filter just to slide everything back into these wide mouth jars.
you can see it goes really fast. It's, a, it's pretty hot down there, so I was moving my finger because it was I was feeling the intense heat there. But basically, you'll if you have something that's um, that's small like this, you'll want to just work on a tile. I'm only holding it because I'm doing a video and I'm really trying to show you what's happening. So you can basically watch it. It starts to to what I would call bloom. It blooms and then it heats and then it smooths and glosses out and it's just a really cool thing to watch. So now I feel like I covered up the silkscreen mistake and saved this component so now I can use it in jewelry. And then I wanted to show you on a 3D piece and for this I am going to use a tile because I'm not going to be able to hold that. So instead of going for like full coverage here, I'm just going to kind of swipe this around on the high parts. I'm going to dump this grunge color on here. And then just tap it off. Maybe even use a silicone brush to kind of get it out from some of these places in the low spots because I think I kind of just want it to flow over the, just not over the whole thing. So you can control some of this process too by getting out your tools. Just because you got medium on an area doesn't mean that the powder has to stay there. So now I'm going to use this just to hold this in place because there is some air here. It's not completely airless, right? But if so, I don't want to push this around. I want to have some control. So here we go. <laughs> How cool that looks. I think that's way cooler than it was before. Now I can see the colors that were going on underneath, but also this metallic, really cool surface technique. So I hope that that gives you some ideas on ways that you can use your color fuse enamels after something is baked to enhance it, to save something that maybe doesn't look the way you intended to create some really cool designs on a 3D surface. This was a gift to me from the Wagner guys, so I just wanted to let you know that you can get this at like home improvement stores. I found it on the Home Depot website, and um, I just love it. I love this. It's lightweight, and it works really well for this technique. Come on back next week to Polymer Clay TV, and we'll have some new fun tutorial for you. See you next time.